I'm Gemma Wanger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. I have a very, very special guest with me today. Her name is Jeannie DeFazio, and she authored and edited the book, Creative Ways to Build Christian Community. I have known her for over 30 years. I feel like I grew up with her. I started very young, attending really wonderful, charismatic meetings that brought Christians together to move in the gifts of the Spirit. And Jeannie, it's just so great to see you. It's great to see you, Gemma. You're, I'm just so in awe of what the Lord's done in your life. Praise God. I've grown up a lot. Well, hey, not only have you grown up, I mean, you, you carry on a professional life in the, in, as, a, as a teacher and a vice principal, and then you carry on a full-time ministry. I mean, God has really, you have flourished in the Holy Spirit, and I'm so proud of you. It's all those seeds you planted way back when, praise yeah, the Lord. The seeds the Lord planted, but, you know, we were all there together, and that's what makes it so special, doesn't it? It really, really does. You know, on page... XX, Roman numeral XX, 20, it, it, it states, Christian community is a training ground for Christian leadership and is essential for the full release of spiritual gifts. Talk about Christian community. All right. Well, I want to make a model of the Christian community we shared. We, as Gemma said in, in her excerpts, Gemma very kindly interviewed for this book, you, um, you said that Mr. Grace, when you were a young child, ex showed you by his example a ministry that was non-traditional. And, and I kind of wondered about that because I know I'm supposed to be answering your question, not asking no. one, but I want to know how did that spark in you? Well, the ministry that Michael Gray started was, we actually were all a part of um, the Catholic charismatic movement. And we had these uh, prayer meetings in Catholic churches. And we would all move in the gifts of the spirit. And then those meetings would go into auditoriums as well as into his home, as well as just a, into restaurants. And it was a constant fellowship, but it was a mighty move of the gifts of the spirit where everyone was used, where I could be used, my gifts. All of a sudden we were waiting on the spirit and I would actually prophesy. And I think about that time I was in, you know, May 5th, 6th, seventh, eighth grade. So it was an opportunity to open up a meeting to the move of the gifts of the spirit where people were listening for God's voice and could be used to minister and edify others. Just as you spoke, I thought of people who have passed that who impacted our lives spiritually, not Mr. Just Mr. Grace, Ada Schwartz. Uh, She's still alive. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, but she was prophetic, and I learned oh, yes. so much about prophetic gifting from Ada. And, uh, of course... And that was a, a meeting that was like, would meet in a hotel, wasn't part of the mainstream church, right. but it was a woman who moved in the prophetic and in the anointing and in the gifts of the Spirit. And Barbara, I can't... Barbara, who's passed, bless yes. her heart, and May Rita. Oh, May Rita Varna, what an angelic-looking woman. I know. See, so this is like, we're, we are now, this is like a, our, our family of God reunion here because we reminisce and basically this book is my reminiscence of ministry. It chronicles my ministry, but it really let me go back in time and realize how much gift the ministry was in my life. Not just for great role models when I was young and my life could have gone in, in bad directions, but, but also um, just seeing people get up and, and, and slay other people in the Holy Spirit and to speak in tongues. And, and for a while, I'd just go to those meetings and say, what are they doing? What is going on? And then later, the Holy Spirit moved and broke through the patterns of my life so I could understand things of the Spirit. And that's what I know. We're here today at the 29th anniversary of Christ and You, the Hope of Glory. We moved into India, uh, Media Fellowship International, Bob Reitz Ministry. It you know, reaches out to people in the entertainment world. So many ministries are represented. 
and I realized the impact it had on their lives, I was very touched by the formative influence that these years of ministry chronicled in my book had on so many people. Yes, and you know, um, the preface talks about the technological age and how computers are isolating people. But as Christians, we have to come together as the body of Christ and move in the gifts of the Spirit and edify one another. But also there's an issue of loneliness in the body of Christ and in the world today. And these small fellowships really gave people a chance to communicate and develop as, as people and just to love on one another and encourage one another. And as Barbara Evans would say, be knit together in love. That's right. The love shared among the people in these groups it was phenomenal. And you know, Barbara always talked about that in the large mainstream churches, where was the moving of the gifts of the Spirit? Where was the prophecy? Where was the word of wisdom, the laying on of hands? And these small groups gave people the ability to be ministered to and to minister in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, talk about Mr. Grace's ministry and that grassroots movement and where it went and, and where it's going today. Mr. Grace had an opportunity through um, being a member of a prominent, powerful family to fund so much ministry. We gave away meal tickets and people came from all walks of life to be there and Bob Reese would preach and, and people on the street would sing. It was the most incredible thing. It was the most incredible thing. People, people who were not, who were homeless, moved out of being homeless. People who were, um, people who were in society dropped their, their, their formality and, and met one-on-one -on -one in Christ with the homeless. It was, it was amazing. I mean, it, and then we had the high, the, uh, high profile testimonial luncheons in New York, which were extraordinary. We were able to get, uh, well, as I said, Susan, Susan Stafford, John Ashcroft, and the attendees, those were speakers, the attendees were phenomenal. Ben Bradley thanked me for putting him in my book, and he's in the Washington Post. Tony Duke thanked me for putting me in a, a marvelous man. I mean, these are people who attended, you know, and, and it touched their life to such an extent they wanted to be remembered as having been there. So it was like, um, it was like an extraordinary event of the, uh, where the magic, magic is a bad word to use, but it was magical in the Holy Spirit. That's all I can say. The Holy Spirit flowed through people. We saw people coming to the Lord. We saw people healed. We, and and uh, I cut my teeth in ministry in, in those moments. I went, to, um, Charlene and I, Charlene Eber and I went to Mother Teresa and, um, for the first time in my life, I laid hands on someone who was deaf. And I said, Joanne, what do I do? How do I pray for this person? She said, lay your hand on his head and say, please be healed in Jesus' name. I just, I just stood and did it. And the little boy was deaf, and he opened his mouth and said, Jesus. The parents were crying. I was crying because we knew the Holy Spirit moved that child to speak. And so those are moments that you can't, you can't buy. You know, I mean, it's just God gave us those moments. Yes, and here um, in your book, you talk about the Great Commission and go therefore and make disciples of all unbelievers. The word here, ethna, means non-Jews, Gentiles, pagans, and heathen. And then you say, um, creative ways to build Christian community is exactly what its title says it is. A very personal, practical response to the present and future prospect of isolation. A treasure trove of examples and suggestions about how to accomplish the Great Commission from community builders telling how, over the years, 
leaders and the ministries, they have implemented creative ways to build up churches and organizations to develop more intensive Christian fellowship and thereby create community. And then it says, its editors have demonstrated a long-term commitment to community building. Jeannie DeFazio is literally networked around the globe, connecting Christians together as she divides her year between countries. So we see that you are the networker. And how have you brought people together? How have you brought people from different countries and different places and different meetings and different religions? People say, stay so entrenched, you know, in their religion. And there's a freedom. You can go to various meetings where there's a moving of the gifts of the spirit. That's right. Okay, well, you know, writing this book brought a lot of people together. Actually, you, you didn't read from me. You read from Dr. William David Spencer, who is a famous theologian who did the preface very kindly. Uh, he did a beautiful job, by the did, way. He did. And, and this, this man understood that when I would speak to him, because I work with him as an Athanasian scholar, about you know, Charlene or Bee or Gemma or Joanne, he knew I had networked around the world, and he, he said, you've got to put that in a book. So when I put it in the book, just as an example of what you're asking, people started working together. So you have that gift. I can't exactly say I have that gift. I'm kind of the networked, and you're the networker. You know, people who, who build community, you build it in your church meetings, and uh, World Alliance for Peace built it in so many ways. Um, they understand that, that uh, God works through the gifting of his people. Now you mentioned Mel Novak with Heavenly Manna. The wonderful thing about Mel is, I mean, Mel's got gifts. I mean, he can, he can go into a prison and he can bring so many people to the Lord. It's his anoy a breaker anointing. He gets people to say that sinner's prayer and come to Jesus. But the thing that has stuck with me in my life is he gave me his intercessory prayer, his deliverance and protection, prayer. the arsenals. And I have spread that through, I, I'd say I've given it to hundreds of people in the past 20 years because I realize how powerful it is in the Holy Spirit, you know. So I thank Mel for that. And, and you, you, you know, when I was 17, I sang for him at uh, the L.A. Mission. So that was my first um, ministry to the homeless on Skid Row, and I haven't stopped since. Well, praise God. You know, Mel, he, he's great. He's great, and, and I know he speaks very fondly of you in your ministry. Yes, he's a great guy. And then you have Lloyd Ogilvie, chaplain to the U.S. Senate, mentioned in your book. He, he gave me three pages of his autobiography, which I loved, because I would go to his meetings, and it was, I was a staff assistant in environment and public works, and things got very tense. You know, there's political world as we know. There are challenges. So I would come in there on Fridays and just be praising the Lord on the way out because he would say, remember what John said, love one another. And you know, you go back into an office where you know the Holy Spirit has just said, love one another when it's gotten real tense and you can, and it breaks the barrier that it opens a closed heart. So uh, the man, uh, when, he, when, I, when I said, will you give me uh, an interview, and he did it, I was so excited, you know, because he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a significant author in the Christian world. Yes, I used to speak at Hollywood Presbyterian. They used to have a life in the spirit on Friday nights where they would actually move in the gifts of the spirit. So that was another example of kind of like an, an offshoot meeting where it was building Christian community. And now we have, of course, we're here at Joanne Petronella's um, anniversary celebration, and she's had a profound effect on your life. And I know when I was... In high school, I remember going to a prayer meeting in a home with Joanne Petronella, and uh, that was at May Rita's house, and May Rita would host all these different meetings. I can only say that Dr. Petronella and Dr. Corral are extraordinarily powerful ministers in Jesus' redemptive love. There are no people to replace them in my life. I, I remember just watching in awe when they ministered, didn't understand it, 
but the Lord opened my heart and, and used them to their breaker anointing to break through so many patterns in my life to draw me closer. And you touch upon art and music as a way to build Christian community. That's a wonderful author named Olga Soler, and she's a powerful minister in, in art. And she, she wrote the conclusion, and she's a multi-gifted woman. Uh, every person who contributed is a multifaceted and gifted human being, and I just felt so very grateful that I had a chance to be in ministry with them. I love the story about the woman who saw the miracles of Jesus being acted out and she was in a wheelchair and she just got up and went up to the stage. It had released such faith into her heart that she believed in the healing power of God and that was through the performing arts. And the performing arts are so powerful and in this day and age, they become so perverted in the world. And we as Christians need to take back that, um, that avenue to praise God and to worship Him. That's right. Praise God. Hallelujah. And also, you know, we have Wally Bruder. You mentioned Wally, Wally How Bruder. Is Wally? Now, the, see, the thing that Wally did that was most amazing, he would hug everybody. And initially, people felt discomfort. And then all of a sudden, people would be waiting for Wally to hug them. Mm -hmm. Now, which is touching because he really did love on them in the Holy Spirit. And that's why I had to mention that he hugged everybody because he really did make people feel loved in Jesus. And I know when I was very young, there was a lot of things going on in my life and I was a hurting young girl and he would come and he would just hug me and it ministered the love of Jesus. The Bible says that the greatest of these is love. And so we love each other with a pure heart fervently and he would just love and love and minister and he just had such a beautiful pure heart and it's kind of like what I see in your book. These are the people that I was with when I was young. I was with when I was growing up. I was with when I started ministering and to me, they were just people. And the Bible talks about, you know, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. And I'm thinking of these people as just people I know. And now all of a sudden, you come out with this wonderful book and you name these people. And now they're famous people. You well, know, no, the book is degree. everywhere. In other uh -huh. words, the book is everywhere. And this is what I told people in the church that I attend when I teach.